Okay, let's look at the link between monetary policy and output, right? Monetary policy and output, GDP. Okay, this will just link this to the previous video I, I did. Okay, basically monetary policy, like fiscal policy, is used to get us out of a recession or to slow down the economy if we are moving too quickly. All right. So what what about a situation when the economy is doing really well, right? The economy is in a boom, in an expansion in phase, right? Output is greater than potential output. Unemployment is less than the natural rate, right? So in this situation, we can draw our graph. Real GDP and the price level long run aggregate supply aggregate demand short run aggregate supply yfe y1 right so here natural rate of unemployment here unemployment is less than the natural rate so what do we have here we have an inflationary gap inflationary gap economy is doing really well and we want to slow it down but we're not going to use fiscal policy, we're going to use monetary policy, okay? So what do we do in this instance? Is we want to increase the interest rate, right? So we call this contractionary monetary policy. Contractionary monetary policy, Right? We're going to increase the interest rate, right? which means we're going to reduce money supply. You saw that in the last video clip. Okay. What you have here, if you want to draw the graph. Cash rate. Overnight funds. Initial money supply is over here. Initial money demand is over here. Interest rate is R1. And now the RBA will sell government securities to the commercial banks. The commercial banks will give the reserve bank money. And hence the commercial banks will have less reserves. So money supply will fall. There will be a fall in money supply. And the interest rate will go up. So it has achieved its aim of increasing interest rates. Now, how does this affect our initial graph? How does this affect this graph over here? Right. Well, first things first. Let's go to aggregate demand. Aggregate demand is equal to C plus i plus g plus x plus m okay and interest rates a change in interest rate leads to a change in consumption and a change in investment so what happens here is that if we increase the interest rate businesses will borrow less money so investment will fall and consumers who buy big ticket items like a brand new car by borrowing money from the bank are also less likely to buy the car. So investment and consumption will fall, which essentially means there will be a shift to the left of the aggregate demand curve. Okay, so we have our shift to the left. down here and if you want to talk about the price level which you should really you will say there's also a fall in the price level and you you know how to do this using fiscal policy now we've just shown you how to do it using monetary policy okay and the opposite applies in the situation of a recession You are in a recession. 
output is less than potential output. Unemployment is higher than the natural rate. Okay, what happens? We just re just uh, go again step by step. You can draw a graph. Real GDP, price level, long run aggregate supply, aggregate demand, short run aggregate supply, Y1, YFE. Okay. So the economy has a recessionary gap equal to this area over here, a recessionary gap. Okay. So what we want to do is we want to get to our long run equilibrium. So what can we do using monetary policy? Right. Well, what we can do using monetary policy is to run what we call expansionary monetary policy. We want to increase the amount of money in the economy. Okay. So we want to reduce the interest rate. Okay. Then we can do what we did in the previous video clip as well. If you want to do this, right? Overnight funds, cash rate, your initial money supply, money demand, interest rate is R1. The government will buy. The government, the Reserve Bank will buy government securities from the central, from the commercial banks. The commercial banks will receive money for it. Their reserves will increase. They can increase the amount of money they can lend to the econ, uh, to the private sector, and this will then lead to an increase in the money supply and a fall in the interest rate. fall in the interest rate okay you saw what happened earlier when we increased the interest rate investment fell consumption fell aggregate demand fell okay but if you lower the interest rate investments will increase and consumption will increase and aggregate demand will increase aggregate demand will increase. So there will be a shift out of the aggregate demand curve. And we will move there. And we go from price level P1 to P2. There's an increase in the price level and we achieve our aim of getting the economy out of recession.